You might be able to see inside there the state of the cylinders. Yeah. I hope they're not cracked. You see that one? No, just that one I think. Yeah. Mm, they're not very pretty. But that's the bottom of the block here. So it's got poo in it, look, but it's dry. I'm just wondering, you know, seeing it's dry, I wonder if I can whack my sandblaster inside that and give it a good old beating. I don't know, we'll see, we'll get it outside. Last night, just before I finished, I sandblasted this block. <laughs> and uh, this is a typical example of what happens when you sandblast cast iron and then you power wash it off with water. Uh, it's gone rusty. <laughs> It's gone really rusty, but, and the most important thing is this, inside all these cavities here where there was you know, a lot of rust, if you can remember, it's all gone. Now I think it was a good call to sandblast it. I used 40 pounds of sand on this, a full bag, but because I got my high pressure nozzle, I could get it in here, all over the place, up, down, round and round, it's lovely and clean, even this passage here, lovely and clean, but the problem is it went red rust. Am I bothered? No. Why? Because I'm going to have to have this block re because it's too badly pitted for rust. That's not a problem, but the thing is, when they uh, finish uh, boring it, they put it through an industrial cleaner, but not an acid wash. Which is what I really wanted to do in the first place, but we haven't got one locally, so that was out. But they will get this back to new, and then we'll paint the block, put the plugs in, and it will look spectacular. Alright, so that's that. But let me quickly take the camera off the stand and show you uh, what I was trying to describe. If I can put that light in there, can you see inside there that how clean... All that lot is. Look at that. It's beautiful. Even though it's rusty, that's not a problem. You know, like it's not, there's no scale. And even inside, even inside here, where that tube is, that ah, is lovely and clean inside there. Can you see? Look at that. It's lovely. You know, got it all out. And of course, I could blow down through these ports here, through these ports. Um, same at the back, get all that rust out. Lovely. And I didn't have to take that one out, so that's even better. I got the old rods and off the pistons. The bushings in here are perfect. So I was thinking about how I was going to clean them up, and I think I'll just put them through the blaster. But So what I've done is I've put the original shells back in to protect this surface here, clinched it up so there's no sand getting in here, and put the pin in, so no sand can get in. It might get a bit through the top of here, but that doesn't really matter. These are all sacrificial. So I just wanted to show you that before we took them out. And blasted them. Uh, yeah, it's going alright. Not too bad. So after a couple of minutes, outside with the big blaster, they came up like new. So the next thing is to strip them down into the parts, you know, take this pin out, take the, the bearings out, and then into the ultrasonic, and then Put some crown proof rust proofing on it. I know it sounds crazy, but when we put them in the bag, we don't want them to sweat. It's like me today, it's really hot. So, next thing head. The head turned out beautifully. In fact, I'm not even sure if I'll put guides in it. Well, guides in it because I don't know if you can see the guides have got like a copper lining. Uh, really good, and they felt really nice and tight, so I think leave well alone. I took all the car plugs out of the head for the water because because the block was pretty bad for rust I uh, took everything out of here as well car plugs are cheap you know I think they're about two or three quid for ten there's nothing really um, oh, this this for me is a bit uh, a bit oily but uh, all the parts came up beautifully even the seats of the valves came up nice you know so all we've got to do now is just check it out for straightness and uh, we'll pop it down to the machine shop to get some seats put in. 
That'll be brilliant. But uh, it's all blown out now, but I think I might just put a little bit of uh, black paint on just to stop it going rusty, because that's a killer with the uh, cast iron. Just goes rusty. I've done the front cover. Looks like it's had a front uh, um, seal put in it before, but just like half arsed. Uh, they haven't put the cover on and they haven't put the seal in properly. So there's that to do. But we'll just do it in steps and then we'll put the parts away ready for reassembly. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put them though. Never mind. Back to pushing the boundaries of Land Rover restorations. I'm going to do something that's going to make you comment like crazy. I'm going to sandblast a crankshaft. That's right, the, the, the 2.25 crank was pretty rusty and I don't like rust. But the thing is I can't find anybody who will dip it in acid and I haven't got a bath big enough to acid dip it and cause myself an injury. So what I've done is this. <laughs> I've wrapped all the journals in um, electrical tape. Then I've put a bag over the end. So all the orifices for the drillings are all blocked off. This has been washed in a solvent. So the tape sticks like feces to a hairy blanket. And for Dave who was wondering how, how am I going to get on with a thrust, well I actually managed to turn the tape at sort of 90 degrees and with a bit of patience I managed to get all this covered without covering, without uh, exposing the um, the surface for where the bearings going to run. Now there is a reason for this. It's not just ordinary sand. This sand is like powder. So when I get it new, the sandblast sand new, it's a 60-30 mesh or 30-60 mesh, whichever way you want to look at it. But this has been through the, my recirculating blaster so many times it's like dust. It literally is like dust. But it makes a nice finish. Well, nice enough. But it's not aggressive. You won't get pock marks or pits, but it'll take the rust off. So I'm going to give it a go. So this is the finished result after coming out the sandblaster. It's perfect. I give it a bit of crown rust proofing. Drink up. And um, it hasn't gone rusty. The journals are lovely. They're really, really nice. I'm not going to even machine them. They're, they're, they're all measured up nice. A little bit of a stain mark, but that's all. <clears throat> but you can see there was no um, sandblast at all on any of the journals. I'm really pleased about that. So I give it a good old uh, cleaning out. I used uh, a little wire brush to go inside the pots just to make sure, you know, like the oil ways. But it looked beautiful. So next thing we're going to do is perhaps do the um, rocker shaft. Gradually getting through all these parts, cleaning them up um, for this 2.25. Oh, we'll have a look at the rocker shaft. Now, as you mentioned, as I mentioned, a quick fix to keep the rocker shaft in place was to put the stud bolts through the rocker shaft, uh, through the rocker box, and then just take it all off. Well, we want to clean it, and this is going to be a problem because, as usual, there's no end, there's no clips in the middle of this rocker box. Uh, to hold the shaft together, if you see what I mean. So, when I take this off, it's going to go ping. This is going to be a bit of a problem. Well, I've got a cunning plan. I don't know if it'll work. Probably. I'll just get these bolts out of here. Talk amongst yourself for a little while. <laughs> I should have planned this a bit better. Uh, while, while I'm doing this, um, I got a bit sidetracked on something the other day. Yeah, I've got something to show you. If you can remember, I took the car plug out, or as American call them, frass plugs. Um, this is the one I took out and I sandblasted it. If I can find my flashlight, let me torch. Which was it? Wait a minute, I'll have a look for it. Here we are. Can you see the light shining through the holes here? See how rusty it was? Look at that, isn't that incredible? So, and look at the inside finish of that uh, plug. Absolutely diabolical, look at it. So that's why I always replace them. People say, oh, you're wasting time, but for the price, I don't bother now. Just take them to bits. Take them out and replace them. There we go. So it all fell out. So what we're going to try and do is keep everything in order, and we're going to clean each part individually. But 
it's going to be tricky so we've got to make sure that this side here to nearest the bench is the valve side so we're going to put them in order take them off and set them all in order and then when we clean them and put them back it'll be exactly the same place just be careful of the little washers and things that stuck on there it's most important they're like more like a spacer than a, a washer if you see what I mean and just keep taking them off the problem with the um, these old series engines was um, the, the bushings used to wear in the rockers and once they wore, or the rocker shaft had worn, and this is why I'm taking it off now because I want to do a parts order to the UK but um, once they were worn you'd lose oil pressure, people think oh it's a bearings gun not necessarily, it used to come out from the uh, from the rocker shaft so this gives us an opportunity to examine things. You can find out how this goes back together in a book, naturally. Oh, of course, a, there is a pin holding it in here on the shaft, so that makes life interesting, doesn't it? There we go. So we take this pin out and we should be able to get the shaft out. Hey, hey. Don't lose that pin. So there's the shaft. Now, we'll get a bit of uh, paper towel and we'll clean this up. And you can probably see there straight away that this is a very good shaft. But you can see where the rockers have been pushing at the bottom here, but there's not, nowhere at the top. Um, so, but what if you, if you had a really bad one, you'd have a step here. And this is really really good. I think this engine's done bugger all. So I'm going to try and clean that up just using some wire wool. I don't want anything too, too uh, abrasive with that because it's a bearing surface. So let's see if I can find some. That's going to be a task isn't it? Well I couldn't find any wire wool. But what I did find was some 2000 grit uh, wet and dry. A little bit of crown rust proofing. <laughs> not drink up but uh, not as a, a rust proofing but more as a lubricant a light lubricant because I can't find my WD-40 I don't know where the hell that's gone it's gone in a cupboard somewhere but uh, you know when you're polishing your shaft because you've got to polish it every now and again don't you? Um, it makes a nice finish but you can also feel the bearing surface if there's any sign of any bearing wear in here dump it right? dump it and get another one but this one is like new really really good I'm not even going to change that so I'll wash it out in the parts washer the next thing is how on earth am I going to clean all these bits up these uh, rockers well I'm not sure but you can see here the pads are beautiful Do you know, I don't think this engine's done much at all but what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, to preserve this, I might just put it through a fine sandblast after it's been washed. Put some plastic plugs in the ends and put a plastic plug over the ball and just hold my finger over the end of the cap and it should, we should be able to give that a nice little finish and see what it comes up like. Let's try it on just one. There you go. That's still nice and shiny. And uh, I got a couple of plugs in there. What I'm going to do now is take the plugs out. We didn't get any sand at all into the bushing. Push them out. Take the cap off here. Put the bearing, if I can, which it probably won't. The screwdriver. There's all my bits gone. Let's see what that turned out like. There. Now, because there are oilways in this, so what we're going to do now. Bonk it in the ultrasonic and uh, leave that on for a few minutes and see what it comes out like. So the rockers came out really nice. There's no sandblast in, in here. I've blasted out all the holes here, you know, for lubrication. Holes here, nice and clean. So now we're going to assemble them back onto the shaft. 
Now you're going to say, Mike, you've taken all this shaft, which way around does it go? It's kind of easy really. I've also blasted these pedestals off a bit. If you notice, there's oil holes at the top. These are drilled all the way through, but there's oil holes at the top. But there's an odd one just here. So that goes through there, and this little locking pin simply locks it into place. So now, well if I had to put it the right way around it would have been better, but... <laughs> oh dear me, one of them days isn't it, there we go. That's what we get with filming. So now, hopefully, we can assemble this. We're going to oil it very, very well. That's it. And put it all back together again. There's no need to keep buying parts for when it's not necessary. So I've got a couple of rockers to go. I've got to put this together and I'll, I'll show you when I come back. So with your, with your shaft all back together, we can now test it by simply turning it over and filling up this hole here that's supposed to be at the end of the engine and we'll fill the... it's very difficult to do actually because I can't show you because... but we can fill the, fill the shaft up and you can see oil pouring out of the uh, rockers. Can you see that? It's coming out of all the holes, make sure it's coming out of there everywhere. I'm happy with that. It's nice clean oil, the bench is clean, so I'm going to oil all this lot up to protect it from corrosion. But I think it's worth taking the time to take them all to pieces and blast them, but make sure you don't get any sand in, well, in these holes here. Uh, and if you do, just turn them upside down and blast them back out. Like I said, the ultrasonic's really good for getting that cleaned up. So, that's that shaft. Done. Thanks, John.